Israel has been known throughout the world for its brutality and aggression against Palestinians. But the regime's recent use of fatal force against unarmed Palestinian protesters in the besieged Gaza Strip has caused fury among rights groups. Israeli forces shot dead scores of Palestinians on the same day the U.S. moved its embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem al Rots. The United Nations human rights chief condemned Israel for using, quote, wholly disproportionate force against Palestinian demonstrators. Zaid Rad al Hussein warned Israel that its actions might constitute willful killings in a grave breach of the Fourth Geneva Convention. That's an international law designed to protect civilians under occupation. However, such warnings from the rights groups fell on deaf ears as regime forces have pressed on with their targeting of Palestinian protesters in the coastal enclave. As for the killing of the Palestinian people, this has been going on for 70 years and Israel does this day in and day out knowing for well that nobody would dare to question it. This last episode on the Gaza border has emphasized to the world on camera that Israel can kill and kill and kill again and nobody would dare to question it. In the wake of Israeli forces killing of Gazans, two rights groups presented a petition to Israel's Supreme Court. They demanded that Israel's military stop using snipers and live ammunition against unarmed Palestinian protesters in the besieged Gaza Strip. But the top court's ruling gave regime forces the green light to carry on with their atrocities. The panel of three judges sided with the Israeli army which argued that the protesters posed a real danger to Israeli soldiers and citizens. Hamas was not involved in this. All the people of Gaza who have been under a siege for the last 12 years are fed up of their daily lives. They have no daily life to speak of, and they are marching to demand their right of return to their homes in Palestine, which they were kicked out of in 1948. The rights groups sharply criticized the Supreme Court for its verdict, saying the judges even refused to watch video clips documenting Israeli shootings of the demonstrators. Israel's Minister of Military Affairs, Avigdor Lieberman, welcomed the ruling and slammed the rights groups for challenging the military. Since the protests began in late March, Israeli forces have killed at least 113 Palestinians, including women and children, and wounded more than 12,000 others. Doctors, paramedics, and even journalists were also among victims of Israel's use of live ammunition. But the massacre of Palestinians is not the regime's sole violation of international law. Despite a UN Security Council resolution, Israel has continued with its construction of settler units in occupied Palestinian territories. The U.S. has on numerous occasions blocked efforts at the U.N. to hold Israel accountable for its total disregard for international regulations. The United Nations has proved yet again that it is a, a useless, ineffective organization and it's been held uh, to ransom by the cheerleaders of Israel. The United Nations not even been able to activate this latest resolution that they voted on just to investigate what happens. Israel says no, America agrees, and the saga continues. And Donald Trump's ascension to the Oval Office has further emboldened the regime, which is serving the West's interests in the Middle East.